Have you been bored playing casual? Do you play Highlander and you're always ready to fall asleep in the middle of the match? Do you top frag in casual almost always and feel like it's time to take your game further? You better get yourself in a competitive sixes. I would like to clarify very early on that this video is a good way to get some beginner insight into competitive sixes, but I am just trying to teach some demo man basics. I currently play newcomer sixes on rgl.gg. This is the North American third party competitive platform. To find your competitive platform, you have to see what region you're in. If you're in Europe, you'd probably be looking at ETF2L. If you're in the Pacific regions of the world or Asia, you'd probably be looking at Asia Fortress. To begin, when I say competitive sixes, I am not talking about Valve's gone off of reefer and cheater filled competitive mode. I am talking about scrimmages and official matches through RGL or similar third-party competitive platform like I mentioned before. Sixes can be very, very confusing and complicated for anyone who doesn't really understand the idea behind it, or is a returning player from the days when TF2 center lobbies was a normal and active thing. As the meta has changed so fucking much and the flow of sixes has changed constantly, at least since I had very first started in 2013 with both updates from Valve and platform specific weapon bans throughout the years along with weapons added into the game through updates. To really get into this idea of sixes, you need to first play with completely new comp players that are exactly the same as yourself. Otherwise you're gonna get smoked to shit and it's not gonna be very fun for you. I recommend that if you are sure of playing competitive sixes, join up the Newbie Mixes Discord, TF2 Coaching Central Discord, and maybe a few Pug Discords, which I will provide links to in the description below. However, it may just be better to participate in scrims, as in not those Pug Discords I mentioned, since sometimes I've seen players develop bad habits from Pugs and they can be hard to break. Playing in scrims with a team that is becoming or is cohesive will lead to learning a lot quicker. Once you join those aforementioned Discords, you should follow their instructions from there. They're pretty good ways to get into the flow and getting used to play sixes instead of Highlanders 9v9 and or Casuals 12v12 player format. To understand sixes, the idea behind the low amount of players is because the sixes meta uses the most versatile classes in the game. In particular, one medic, two scouts, two soldiers, and one demo man. These are considered the meta classes and are the standard form of playing. Thanks to this, Sixes is not as sniper centric as Highlander. I will state that off classing, having a scout or soldier play any of the other not already played classes is allowed with the rule of only one player per off class, meaning you only have one heavy, one engineer, one sniper, etc. Off classing is standard for pushing slash defending last and or breaking stalemates. The first thing about Demo Man you should know is, well, Demo Man. He is a bombastic, self-described Black Scottish Cyclops, demolitions man who drinks, like, a lot. His stock weapons include the grenade launcher, the sticky bomb launcher, and the bottle. Forget two out of three of those weapons, because in sixes, you won't use them, with some slight exceptions here and there. The second thing about Demo Man you need to understand is that within sixes, a rule you should keep in mind is that the Demo Man's team is only as good as him and the demo man is only as good as his team. In terms of weapons for sixes, your loadout will be as follows. The Iron Bomber, the Sticky Bomb Launcher, and the Half Zatoichi. To explain why these weapons in particular, let's start at the best weapon. The weapon that sets demo man apart from every other class in the game. The Sticky Bomb Launcher. Able to deny the following items. Choke points, doorways, corridors, offensive pushes, defensive holds, people attempting to play the goddamn game, bombing soldiers, cocky scouts, players standing on cap crowds of blues, enemies, already popped ubers, and basically everything except a sniper. The sticky bomb launcher is not only extremely critical to the demo man's strength, but the entire meta behind sixes, as its ability to launch precise and somewhat sneaky explosives at medium to long ranges allows him to do enough damage for your team to come through and finish kills. I also would like you to take note of this silly fun little meter here. This fun guy right here is what makes Demo Man so meta defining. When you are preparing to launch a sticky bomb, if you hold down left click, the sticky will not instantly launch and this meter will begin to fill until it reaches the end of the meter, in which the sticky you were charging will be launched regardless of if you have released your attack button or not. By releasing the attack button before the meter fills, the sticky you have been charging will launch out. 
Now, I do not want you to get confused into thinking this meter makes Stickies straight up do more damage. This meter simply allows you to launch Stickies further and further. While the meter makes it seem like there is a hard limit to this, by simply doing this, you can extend the distance of a Sticky even further. When it comes to mid fights, this meter allows for a technique called Sticky Sniping, which essentially defines the Demoman's role in mid fights and the Demoman's ability to find how a team loses or wins a mid fight. How does this work exactly? Stickies have an interesting feature different to most other damage ramp up slash fall offs. Stickies will do more damage the longer they are undetonated. This damage number does have a hard limit of course. You do get some damage ramp up, however like the syringe gun and rocket launcher there is slightly reduced damage ramp up at close range to discourage aiming at your feet. Anyways, that's something you'll probably hardly notice since you'll only ever need a sticky close to your feet to combat an enemy if you don't get crazy direct pipes off and or your team is unable to assist you. Stickies that have only been undetonated for as long as they cannot be detonated, this is 0.7 seconds or 70 milliseconds, usually can do on the low end about 32 damage and 42 damage on the high end. These are going to be the two damage numbers you will see the most often in early mid fights. Speaking of damage numbers, make sure you have the option from advanced options, display damage done as text over an enemy checked, as calling the amount of damage an enemy has taken, example, med took 70, can turn the tide of team fights for your team, as it is crucial that you call damage when it is dealt to enemies by you. How you detonate and spam stickies is ultimately up to you. I like to use stickies for low hanging area denial in mid fights after 1 to 3 low damage stickies. What I mean is I like to send out two to three mid-range stickies, and this works especially well when your soldiers are bombing the enemy, basically when the enemy team is not focusing on you, and let them sit for a minute and then detonate. This can reduce your DPM if the stickies are not in the right spots, but when they are, it can actually be a lot better than just throwing out a bunch of cruddy 32 damage stickies and not really getting anything done for the team. Despite all of this, and despite the way I'm recommending that you should play, Play how you find works best for you and your team. This is not to say the demo man is not strong enough to completely wipe teams, which is where his primary can come into play. The second best weapon in demo man's arsenal is the iron bomber or grenade launcher. However, while I do consider this the second best weapon, any decent competitive demo man knows damn well that being a decent demo man includes an extensive combination of the uses of both the sticky launcher and the iron bomber. The Iron Bomber originally was considered a direct upgrade to stock as the hitbox on the pipes was bigger than stock meaning direct shots were somewhat easier, and the less bounce and roll allows more precise splash damage and easier pipe jumps. Nowadays, especially since Valve said, lol let's work on this game, the Iron Bomber is still pretty good, but as it no longer has the bigger hitbox, it is a bit more of a personal preference slash situational item. I say situational as on some maps with more longer areas of play, the speed and distance which rolling pipes can obtain can be especially helpful for doing some spare splash damage on holds. I do genuinely think that the Iron Bomber versus stock comes down to personal choice, and I prefer the Iron Bomber for having more precise rollers that can give you an emergency area denial when there's no stickies loaded. Speaking of having stickies loaded, one of the most important concepts I would like to introduce to you in competitive sixes is ammo management. As a demo man, your grenade launcher only has 5 total loads of 4 pipes for a total of 20 pipes, and your sticky bomb launcher only has 4 total loads of 8 stickies for a total of 32 stickies. While the 32 stickies number seems like a lot, the time it takes for this silly, goofy, little, fun, epic number to go from 0 to 8 is insanely mentally straining, and because you actually have to stay alive in 6s, often without dispensers, it is very easy to make this number and this number go to this number and this number. You may not think it, but trust me, ammo management is extremely, extremely important as demo man as it gives your damage a tempo and dictates the speed and efficiency at which you can do damage. Because of this, taking the moments in between fighting to grab a medium ammo box and make sure your pipes and stickies are loaded can sometimes be the difference between your life, death, or in many cases, the entire game. I also recommend that unless you are placing traps, especially on maps like Snake Water and Metalworks which both rely very heavily on sticky sniping, to only have 4 stickies loaded, as this many stickies is pretty much the perfect number to perform all the denial tasks I mentioned earlier in a more emergency situation. I know this may all seem like a lot of information at first, and it is, 
but as you start to put it in practice more, you will find it to be completely second nature. The last weapon in the 6's Demo Man arsenal is a half Sadoichi. Now you may question, why not just use stock? In a good chunk of higher level divisions, stock and its reskins is used for melee as the half Sadoichi is almost never really applicable. However, in lower divisions, the half Sadoichi is useful and lasts if both your scouts are off class, as they cannot use the boss and basher to build Uber since, well, they aren't playing scout. The half Sadoichi's health removed on holster that occurs when you haven't gotten a kill with it allows you to build Uber on last and can allow your team to play more aggressive on last. In higher divisions, teams move into last pretty quickly, so this really doesn't have a practical application. But in lower divisions where teams often take their time getting into last, especially when stalemates occur, this can turn the tide of a last hold and having that uber available can often be the reason why you are able to wipe a last push and retake mid. I'm just going to keep this plain and simple. Learn rollouts. Look them up. I'm not going to go over them. They're very complicated. They're annoying. Just practice them, get them down pat, and keep them consistent. Make sure to call whether or not your rollout is fast, slow, or about even with the other team's demo man. The last thing I would like to go over is the style of maps. In competitive sixes, two game modes are played, King of the Hill and Control Points or 5CP. We only play these game modes because they are considered the most balanced, maps either usually being mirrored or one-to-one -one team bases. Oftentimes, custom maps are used for competitive, especially in the case of product, as regular viaduct is kind of blown out with the snow everywhere, and there is no connector door in default viaduct, so this version is used. One of the most popular sixes maps is CP underscore process underscore whatever variation. I am not saying this is the best or worst map, but it is one of the most common maps dating back to when we used to play CP Granary and others for sixes. And in newbie mixes or pugs, it usually is the most commonly played map or the one you are going to learn first. That's all I really will have to say about an introductory video to Competitive 6's Demo Man. I know some of this is kind of rambly and probably extremely confusing. Trust me when I say it will become second nature as you get some experience under your belt. If you want more detailed wording, I would watch Habib's The Book of Habib video, which goes over some crucial theories I did not cover due to mostly wanting to get the idea of mechanics across more. I know many might hark on this tutorial for not covering positioning, as it's often the biggest symptom of deaths in Demo Man and Sixes. But I personally believe knowing positioning as a Demo Man is a map to map basis and will become easy to remember with knowledge and experience, and is something somewhat difficult to teach. I really, really do recommend watching Habib's video that I mentioned previously, as it goes over other but slightly more important basic mechanics, and also theories. I went over damage, ammo management, sticky mechanics, because while Habib states these mechanics are fairly easy to make as perfect as possible, which, well, I do somewhat agree with, learning them and beginning to understand them for the first time is somewhat difficult, and can be off-putting if you are closed-minded about it. Anyways, fellas, get your asses on RGL, or your respective third party competitive platform and get some fucking frags.